Blog Talk Radio. Hello and welcome to Rolling with the Diva. I'm Sabrina Williams and I'm your host. And for the next 30 to 90 minutes, we're going to do some great interviews, enjoy some great music, and just tell you guys how much we appreciate you for listening. Have a good time and enjoy the show. Hello, everybody, and hello from Las Vegas, Nevada. This is Sabrina Williams, and I'm your host, and today our special guest is Sheila Moore Piper. She's a great gospel singer, and we're going to learn more about her in a second. Hi, Sheila. Hi. Hi, Sabrina. How you doing? I'm doing good. Thank you for coming on our show. We really appreciate it. We're blessed and honored with that. But, oh, you're um, welcome. Thank you so much for having me. I'm honored. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Okay, so real quick, you know, I try to stay up with the news, but um, I'm saddened to read that the 20-year-old rapper XX Nation was killed today and shot, um, basically okay. for, no, for no reason. And so that brought me to a topic that we're going to talk to talk about after we interview you. And the topic is, I read this article um, it's by Vox. It's by um, German Lopez, Christina Animus, and, ja- and ja- Javier Zar Cristino. Um, you guys can find them on Facebook at www.vox.com. And it was an April 4th, 2018 edition. And it says basically, how has America and has not changed since Martin Luther King Jr.'s death? And they give you 11 charts. And we are going to talk about them all. But as you read the article, I was just really, really, you you hear this, but when you see the statistics, it's like, whoa. Black Americans make much less than Caucasian peers. Um, we already knew that. Um, black people are still unemployed at nearly twice the rates as, as Caucasian people. And you know what's interesting, though, Ms. Sheila, is that if you – Listen to the news, unemployment rate has went down. So I'm not for sure where they're looking at or what people that they're talking about because unemployment is still high for some races, and especially our people. Um, so. I heard um, a pastor um, say a long time ago, he taught me about that. He said that it's your job to tell you about statistics, but that does not mean the statistics are always, the, the, they're not that, that they're always accurate. But it's exactly. their job to give you statistics. So year, I mean, I learned that years ago that so to, it's just statistics. Doesn't mean that it's accurate, you know. So yep. um, and it doesn't mean it's accurate. As far as the rapper is concerned, yeah, I just saw that. Um, People magazine is on my phone, and they just alerted me to that, and I was like, wow, you know, he she got shot standing outside of a dealership. But I'm like, well, what was he doing? <laughs> I mean, that's and it. You know he what? was just outside of a dealership, and that's it. So you you kill him just because he's outside of a dealership? That doesn't make any sense to me. It's weird. And this is and this is what um, somebody wrote on um, on Instagram, and it's G R Y N Z D E V O S, and he says, "Rest in peace." He goes, "Who got shot today in Miami? Streets out there are getting way out of hand." Be a man and at least fight with your hands. If that's not, it's not that serious, no one deserves these young teens and young adults within these days just to flex on others. Life's way too precious for all of that, and for all that s h i t. And that's sad. It really is sad because there was nothing else, nothing more to that than that. And to kill somebody out of jealousy, out of rage, or maybe he said something to you, it's just not the way to solve it. And he's right. In my day, I'm 54. In my day, if somebody bothered me. I'm going to tell you what, I got your butt down on the floor and I whooped you, and then I got up and went on my little happily way. So I'm not saying everybody needs to beat up everybody, but we need to go back to the days where people just solved their fights with with their, with their themselves and stop all this drama. Because killing somebody, now that's another young um, African-American um, man that's wiped out. That's a, another young person that's wiped out. Um, I agree. One of the other things that says white um, white wealth family is nearly seven times greater than black wealth family. And you guys can tune into my, um, there's a, ra- a radio show I did on real estate with um, Jamisa. And um, she talked about that and talked about redlining and um, block busting. And she had some really great points, but she also pointed out that we have to be responsible and not be held back 
to want to buy property. You know, if we can go to Starbucks, if we can go to McDonald's, if we can go to the movies, we can put a dollar a day away to save to put down on a house because what a lot of people don't realize is that you're, you're, you can be matched by a grant to buy a house, literally, seriously. And if you're a yeah. veteran, you that's like 1%. Yeah, um, you got and then, it. If you're a veteran, so, then, you got it. Oh, yeah, you do. I was thinking about marrying yeah, a veteran. veteran they, got so much to do. they got so many things for you as far as I'm, my pops is um, a veteran. So if you're a veteran, they got so many things for you that you can use to your advantage, you know, and, and you know, take responsibility, you know, take um you know, just take the initiative and take, you know, and and use whatever they have available for you to be able to, you know, to to do what you have to do. I agree with you. And then the I other totally. one, the, the fourth point was black people are more than twice as likely to live in poverty. And we know that. And those numbers may never, ever, ever, in my opinion, um, come equal because of just how, just how we, the, a beginning of eras with property being taken from us and um, wealth taken from us. So those numbers may never correct themselves, but we can try. So that's enough of that for right now. I just wanted to try to stay up to date on on um, on letting everybody know what's happening. And as, and as you guys know, I try to give my opinion and all those people that don't like my opinion, you know what I always say, send me a Snickers bar. Okay. Um, <laughs> I have no sense. I do want to tell you guys, I am really honored about this. I may, I probably will not even win this, anything in this, but I was elected for um, for one of the radio people for SPIN Awards. There's a lot of great people out there who's been doing it a lot longer than me, but it's just an honor, and it really made my day because as I was telling, oh, wow. um, Congratulations. appointees. Congratulations. That's yeah. Awesome. Yeah, I was, and that's going to be happening in October. Um I uh, and my friend Stacy. Hi, Stacy. Where is oh, she? Oh, the, oh, the so Spin Awards. This, yeah, the Spin Awards is at the end of October. I went last year. It's absolutely amazing. That was um, well, my initial appointment. First time doing it. it. It's awesome. I'm going. I'm just going just because you guys know the diva travel. So and of course, I'm, my travel agency is sending me. Um, so I'm going. So and I just want to just be there because I'm going to be interviewing people and taking pictures. It's just an honor because I have to really be honest. And I was telling a point at this last week um, through a text message after she um, was on the air with me is that I really was thinking, am I doing anything good with the radio? Am I reaching people? Am I really getting the message out there? And that just really uplifted me because it's been three years, almost four years that I've been doing this and I've really been coming back to it hardcore in the last year. So that just really uplifted my spirit and, and for God to basically say, hang in there, kid, you're doing a good job. And that just really, mm-hmm. that, that mm-hmm. really uplifted me. I, and I listened to well, the other congratulations. radio. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just congratulations. Like I said, it's really nice. It's been awards. I was there last year. I went to support. I was just uh, there supporting um, some other radio friends of mine that I know and um, that won. And I mean, it was beautiful. It was my part. It was it was wonderful. Just a few kinks, you know, needed to be worked out, but nothing major. She did that. She mm-hmm. did a wonderful job, and it was amazing. Well, I'm excited to go. I'm just excited to go because I know that somewhere in the building will be food and drinks, and that's what my goal is: always to to find the food and drinks of any place I go. Okay, so enough with that. I just need to do the radio show. Well, ladies and gentlemen. We're welcoming to the air Miss Sheila Moore Piper. And I Aww. just what? Yay. <laughs> I just so excited. Wait, and I we am. have oh my goodness. We have on the line, I know Stacy is listening, but I want to all to know that this is my editor in chief for the magazine that I'm going back to write for, the Urban Release. And she is such a great friend. We started out where I wasn't really happy with her because she was originally my editor for my paper for grad school. But because of Stacy, I graduated with a 3.97, working as a full-time mom and student from Liberty University um, over five years ago because of Stacy saying, I'm not accepting this, you can do better, or you can fire me. Hey, Stacy. <laughs> That was so funny. How you doing? I was, I was I'm, I'm at work and I'm you know I gotta tune into Rolling with the Divas, so I just wanted to hear you know the show and see. I'm so happy 
congratulations on your nomination. You know I love you, girl. I know you do, and I love you, too. You just message me if you have a question like you usually do, okay? Yes, you're awesome. ma'am, I will. All right, love you, babe. All right, you guys, if you you guys have to know that that is one um, amazing young lady. You guys have to follow her. I will be going back to writing for um, – for the Urban Release Magazine. Okay, so Houston based awesome. Christian. Congratulations. That's amazing. Wow. Oh yeah. I you know what? <laughs> I will have to send you my um some articles that I wrote. And I used to actually write on um I mean I think I wrote three or four articles for the magazine. But I write about everybody so I'm actually excited to go back to it because I'll be writing about controversial. I'll be writing about people now that I'm interviewing that I'm gonna submit and I really think that they're, you know, to that caliber. I'm going to submit them to Stacey. She'll make the final decision. But I'm really excited to write because behind every great artist, um, Mm -hmm. I want to stop and say this, first of all. Behind every great artist, there's somebody pushing them. And for the two ladies that's been on, um, I've had, um, for Sheila Moore Piper, it's been Mr. Piper. And for Nevia, and I hold my goodness, I'm just going to call her Miss Nation. It was her husband. And both these men, uh-huh. Are, they're awesome in their own right. I didn't even realize that's, until that's right. I was doing something, and I realized that Mr. Piper, oh, my God, he sings. and But he's pushing his wife. And I just want to say, y'all need to go talk to them, see if you can duplicate their DNA, because these are some great men. Because I was just excited. You know it's, 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 it's great that you mentioned, it's great that you mentioned Neva and um, Jason, because um, actually, Lynn and myself, we um, actually um, wrote and produced Neva's song, her new one, Walk With Me, we're the ones who actually wrote and produced that. So she's actually a part oh. of the BDMU group family. You know, if you look on the website, um, our BDMU group website, Neva's on it. <laughs> oh my so they're God. like family. So, so they're like family. So it's like, they're just like family. So when you said that, as a matter of fact, um, next weekend, um, not this weekend coming, but next weekend, Neva's doing her CD um, release, um, single debut in Gonzalez, and, and I'm on it. So I'll be there in Gonzales with her. Actually, um, June the 29th and the 30th, I'll be with her and Jason. Yes. Jen and I'll be with her and Jason next weekend. So that's how it works. Yeah, we, we, we like fam. You guys, <laughs> you guys produce some great music, and her songs are very moving. And I just, I'm just wanted to give a shout out to those husbands because a lot of times we hear that husbands aren't this and husbands aren't that. And I just want to say, oh my gosh, it's it's oh, no. the quality. Yeah, my, yeah. I, thank you so much. Yeah. Yeah, no, we I just want to point that yeah. out. So, um, okay, so we're going to go on. Miss um, Piper, she brings um, listening, um, 47 minutes of uh, worth of excellent listening with her, sp- her spectacular work to date, Are You Ready, Chapter 2. Release from the, and hopefully they get this right, BDM slash un- you Groove Music you label. Groove, in uh-huh. 2000- That's it. It, it, mm-hmm. In 2014, it is comprised of 12 powerful and anointed tracks with popular songs like Get Excited, which we're going to hear today, which debuted in the top 50 DRT rock slash adult contemporary mm-hmm. charts and was just released of April of this year. So mm-hmm. no, with no further ado, Miss Sheila Piper Moore, let's talk about you. Tell <laughs> everybody where you're coming from. And let's start with the first question. Who got you into music? Um, you know, that's a God thing. I started doing music when I started writing music when I was eight years old. So that's that's a God thing. I got into it and I really didn't really really um know um how how talented I really was until I went to college and I had to start writing music for some of my sorrows because we were in a music sorority, music fraternity and so I wrote most of the songs. And I really, really, really didn't know until I um when um um I'm I'm texting, I'm a I'm a Texan but when I got to Houston, I'm actually from Dallas. I was born in Dallas. So when I got to Houston years and years ago, um, um, the Lord used me. I was a music teacher. <laughs> I stepped into education, and I became a music teacher for about maybe eight, nine years. And I taught other subjects as well. But I was a teacher overall for like 14 years, and I taught and about eight or nine of those years I taught music. And so I really, really did not start really um, doing my own CDs and stuff until maybe I say around 2008. We did the first record, the Sarah Cho Twice, according to Shishi, and that one has Rest Your Mind on it. That's the old record. And uh, we just did a, it was just an internet record. Uh, I was still teaching at the time, so I really didn't just really go full bloom until 2014 when I reached my pinnacle of teaching. My, 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 what I was making as money was concerned. After that, the Lord was like, 
it, it's time for you to do music now. <laughs> right. Full time after I had just got promoted. Father God, are you serious? I just got promoted. I got the big promotion. I've been teaching all these years, and I finally reached my pinnacle of, of, of monies that I'm making. And you want me to go out and do what now? He said, I want you to come out, and I want you to do music now. I want you to do music full time. <laughs> so now it's flipped. So as opposed to it was teaching full time, music part time. Now it's music full time and teaching part time. So I would say the Lord has been the one that that, that has been the Arthur, um, as they said, the Arthur of me driving this music thing for um, for a minute now. Wow. Are you? Is there any regret? You know what? No. Um, you know, I always say that success is not a destination; it's a journey. So there mm-hmm. are no regrets. There are, you know, I got to say, there are some challenges that come with this. It's, a, it's challenges that come with being an independent artist. And because, you know, we have a grind that we have to do. It's a grind of building relationships, a, a grind of being able to be in the right places at the right time, making sure your music is marketing, standing up on your business knowledge and things like that, that it's a grind. But it has not been um, any regret. Challenges, yes. I got to say some challenges. Regrets so far, no. No regrets. Mm-hmm. Nice. What's it like to have a husband that sings and working with him? My husband doesn't sing. <laughs> and he does it. My husband, oh, oh, my husband, I got my, that wrong. My husband doesn't sing. My husband doesn't sing. My husband, um, he actually plays a lot. He um, produces and okay. he plays a lot. He does a, he does a lot of arranging. I do a lot of writing of the music. He does a lot of arranging of it. So we just kind of work together as a partnership. So my husband doesn't okay. sing. I, I don't know if you heard the birthday thing he did for me this week. I mean, last week. He tried to do it, tried to sing, but he, he didn't master that at all. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But you know what? I won't but even. I love the, I I love even the I, you know what? That's okay because not everybody's meant to sing. I can't sing. Yeah. Um, yes, but I love my the only... gesture. But, but yeah, yeah, I love the gesture, though. But it's okay. It's okay. He tried. <laughs> okay. I try to sing You Are My Sunshine, but it never goes well. But anyway, that's my claim to fame. Okay. Um, oh, that's okay. a nice song. I like that song. That's a beautiful song, too. <laughs> it is, isn't it? Okay, so your first, the, the first song that we're going to play, Rest Your Mind. Tell me what mm-hmm. was behind creating that. Oh, um, that was I wrote that song um, years ago. That, that song is three months, almost 10 years old, actually. And people are just not finding out about it because they get excited, open the doors. There's so many, um, so open the doors. So that's one of those songs they just kind of went back to. But, you know, the Lord gave me that song to write years ago when I was going through some stuff, and I really was kind of trying to figure out how stuff was going to work out. And um, right. I'm, I'm the kind of person who I like to, I like to try to work out stuff my own on my own self. And sometimes it's it's hard for me to just submit it to God because I'm like, okay, I want to try to, Lord, let me figure it out. <laughs> I give it to him, but I'm like, let me take it back. Jesus, you're not working fast enough. Let me do it. Let me do it. But it was that. one of those times where, yeah, but that was one of those times where I was trying to get in and figure it out, and the Lord was like, you're not going to be able to figure it out. You're not going to be able to do it. What you need to do is give it to me. Rest your mind and let me do it. <laughs> and out of that, Why that song, we... Rest Your Mind, was burnt. Go ahead. Why do we that, think that, that it's... Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. go ahead. I'm go sorry. Ahead, go ahead. Go ahead. Sorry, Sabrina. Go ahead. No, what, um, why, do we, why do you think it's so hard for us as Christians to give things to God? Because we, we used to working it out on our own. When you are a person who likes to... You know, the Bible says in Hebrews, we say, you know, um, you, then, you know, you have to, you know, rest from your work. There's a scripture that talks about that, that you are to rest. You're really supposed to be resting while he's taking care of that. I think it's hard because we just automatically, we just want to get it done. We just want it done. And sometimes we, timing, everything is about timing. God is about, Jesus is about timing. And sometimes when we think his timing is a little bit, it's just too slow. You're too slow. So we want to fix. So you try to fix it. And when you fix it, you make a big mess. <laughs> we make a big mess and instead of just letting him do it himself. Just let him do it. You know, he knows what the timing should be. So you just gotta learn to. We just gotta. You gotta learn to rest in that thing. Give it to the Lord, you know, and just rest in it. You know, cast your burdens upon the Lord, and He will sustain thee. He will never suffer the righteous to be moved. Just, just give it to Him and leave it there, and watch Him, watch him work it out. And so, um, but you know, sometimes we fail at that. I can say I failed okay. at it. You know, uh, yeah, we don't always. Sometimes I pass it. Sometimes I pass the test. Sometimes I get it. I mean, Lord, I didn't pass that test. So I got to take it over. <laughs> there you but, go. Um, but I'm, like, but I'm learning. I, I'm, He's like, a I'm learning. You just got to give it to him. 
Yeah, he's a God. Of, he gives us grace, and he knows it. He knows it. But he said, just get your hands off of it. Just let me do it. I tell him, he said, it's going to turn out if I do it. But if you got your hands on it, you know, then Jesus is going to take his hands off of it. So he's like, well, you got it. So he's like, well, you take your hands off of it. But then I love what I learned. Somebody had said last week, somebody said that where your power ends, he has began. Amen. Where, yeah. So that's where we are. So rest your mind. Well, here we go with Rest Your Mind by the great gospel singer Sheila Moore Piper. Here we go.
All right. That was Rest Your Mind mm. by Sheila Moore Piper. That was a great song. And there, I like the beat. Who else was singing in there with you? Uh, just me. <laughs> just me. Just me on vocals. Just myself. <laughs> very, very nice. Yeah. So we would thank like you, to, you. Uh, what's it like to um, be a full-time um, songwriter um, and um, singer who, you know, this is what you do for a living full-time and you travel. I, I'm assuming you travel a lot because I've seen some of your posts. Yeah. Um, is that uh-huh. hard on your I mean, family, or is it, it? How do you work that out? Well, you know, it's not that hard on my family because I, I don't have any kids. Um, okay. I have I only have a godchild, and my and of course she doesn't stay with me. But I have no kids, so uh, I just have my love my, my love puppy dog, and I can I can board him and put him somewhere um, really safe. But I don't really have any kids, so for me it, it works out um, pretty fine. But and and for me, when it's time to go, I'm ready to go, and when it's time to come home, I'm ready to, I'm ready to come home. So it works well for me. It just sometimes my husband my husband travels too, and sometimes we travel okay. together. So we just have to we just have to get together and coordinate our schedules. And um, he plays for a church. Um, sometimes so sometimes he can't go with me on weekends because he has to be back at church. And sometimes he can take off and go. Like this weekend, we we um, I'm a part of Rhythm of Gospel um, festivities that's going on this coming week in um, Greenville, South Carolina. Um, my husband is coming with me for this one. Um, but but it, there's some times when I had to go to Rockford and um, the beginning of April, Rockford, Illinois. I was up there with Justin Francis from Soul Radio for their um, they had the Independent Award. I mean, well, they had the Independent um, um, thing that they had going on that Sunday, and then that 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 next day they had the Soul Soul Radio Award. And um, he didn't go with me for that. And it was cold in Chicago, Rockford area. It was freezing, and he wasn't oh, able wow. to go. Yeah, he wasn't able to go because he had to stay back. So I had to end up traveling. Um, traveling. So Lord and I just, just hit the road and flew out and did what we needed to do. And so that's what. But so other than that, it's great. I like it. I love traveling. So when it's time for me to go, I'm ready to go. <laughs> and when it's now, time for me to come the, back, I'm like, I'm ready to go. <laughs> where's the best place that you have ever performed that that you like that you really enjoy playing at? Oh wow! I really, really, to be honest with you, I really, really enjoyed Vegas this year. This is my fourth okay. year being in Vegas. Um, my first time in Vegas, I enjoyed it. With I was with Donna McAfee, West Coast Praise. I had a wonderful time. And this year, I was at Club Hip Hop again for the second time with Jay Williams out of Atlanta. I had a okay. wonderful time. And every drink was our host. I had a wonderful time. I really, 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 really did. And I also can tell you I've had a great time. Um, you, um, two years ago, I was in Tyler. I mean, Chandler, Texas is on the other side of Tyler. My parents, parents are from Tyler, about 20 minutes to 30 minutes from Chandler. And it was um, a small crowd, but I enjoyed it. Um, the church was packed, 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 packed. And, I mean, we had a great, great time. We had a great time. So, so walk me through your typical setup, warm-up, and breakdown for one of your um, shows is there something that you do every time that just keeps you focused and get, and getting ready? Yeah, I have to stay focused. I have to pray. Um, I get in the Word a lot anyway, but I really have to um, be prayed up and worded up and uh, um, make sure my voice is ready to go. I do a lot of teas and things, hot tea, warm teas and things like that. Um, don't do a lot of dairies and things right before, right before I sing. But mostly I just have to stay focused and I have to practice. People think that just because, oh, you know, the songs are ready, you just get up there and say, no, I don't do that. I practice every single time. I practice all the time. It doesn't matter what gig I have. I still practice. I still rehearse. I still practice. So because um, this particular, um, I'm going this week to Greenville, I'm doing a medley. I have to do Morning Glory that Thursday morning, so I'm doing a medley. I'm doing a medley okay. that Thursday, then I come back and do Top Tunes that Thursday evening, get excited that Thursday evening, then I have to do Get Excited Again Friday, but I'm doing it another kind of way. I have a I have another kind of intro intro on it. So I have to okay. I have to practice. I always have to rehearse and practice and make sure that I'm hitting the intricate where I need to hit and where I need to go so I know where I'm going and what I'm doing. So, yeah, practice is a big, big part of it. Praying and practice, those two things, the P's and P's. <laughs> and practice. Pray and practice. Because you, know, you know what? I know I, I know. some people just say they get on the set, and I know some people say, they, you know, like you say, pray. some people say pray and practice. Some people just practice. 
But if you're not practicing your skills or your passion and, you, and you're and you taking it for granted, it'll come back at you and bite you um, in the butt as far as I'm concerned. Now, I have a question. Why don't you drink dairy before or eat dairy before you do a show? Why is that? Um, because slim, you can get slim. Some people say it's a myth. I don't oh. think it's a myth. Uh, some people say it's a myth. I don't think so. If you eat dairy before a show or something like that. Now, one time I met, I had, I, when, in 2015, I was supposed to say, and I, I was drinking an insurance because I really didn't want to eat. And that was like two, three hours. Like, oh my God, Lord, I drink it. But the Lord carried me through, and that performance was great. But I just okay. wouldn't sit down and just eat a lot of ice cream and stuff like that right before you get ready to sing because you don't want the phlegm to get caught up in your throat. Oh, also, I don't eat. I, yeah, I don't eat a heavy. You don't eat a heavy meal. I can, I have to eat something. Like I have to eat maybe something light, like a soup. I do a soup mm-hmm. or a broth, a chicken soup or something like that. But I won't eat nothing heavy because I want to make sure that nothing um, sitting in my um, digestive tract is sitting there or whatever that's going to stop me from being able to um, get my notes out or whatever. And I love cold water and I love popsicles. Because I live in Texas and it's hot here, so I eat popsicles a lot. Yep. <laughs> but and I can't you know eat popsicles what? I think before I sing. Because it'll freeze up your tonsils, or what well, do you do? They say that you don't suppose. I've heard my um, my vocal coach say one time, you don't, you know, you don't supposed to drink anything cold. But somebody told me it was a myth. Somebody said that's not true. But I just don't do it. Um, I just don't because I want to make sure that you know, um, warmness is better on the vocal cord um, than the coldness. But like I said, somebody said it was a myth. But I like I eat like popsicles, but I just I just don't do it. Those are just things I just don't do. I don't mess with any chocolate, no dairy, no cold stuff, no popsicles, none of that. I try to make sure everything's um, cool and my vocals are warmed up. And one thing I have to do is I have to warm my vocals up. Um, you know, with those vocal leads, it can be very annoying. <laughs> but right. it's what it is. You know, you have to you have to you know come out and kind of warm your vocals up. Because, you know, you don't just want to get out there and, you want to vocals? No. <laughs> Why? <laughs> Why not? <laughs> it's a muscle. You know, your vocal cords are a muscle, so you warm them up. Amen on that. Now, um, your song, we're going to go into Get Excited. And this is... Um, oh, yeah. Yeah, this is, and this song actually yes. is very, very... Um, oh, my God. It just has a beautiful... It's just beautiful. Are you a soprano or alto, or can you sing... Um, different um, um, how I, I, I want to say vocals. Yeah, I can sing both. I can, I can, um, I'm actually when I was growing up, I was more alto, and then when I got to college, my um, voice teacher trained me to go higher to be a soprano. So I can I can do soprano and I can do alto. I can do both. I can do okay. both of them. Yeah. I oh, cannot wow. do tenor. Really? I, if I do do tenor, I do tenor on a background every once in a while. But if it's too low, I can't I can't do it because it's that's not my range. But but um, soprano and alto I can handle pretty pretty reasonably. You know what's funny is that I can't sing, but I um and I think part of it is because I don't like singing. I'm actually a tenor. I always thought I was an alto, oh. but, but I'm a tenor, and I think I get really bothered by that I have to sing deep. But I love opera, and so I, when I'm watching opera. I will be singing with them because they have a lot of the tenors, like classical Domingo, and um, and they have they have some great African American um, opera singers, and they they yes. do men and women sing. sing tenor. So I notice when I'm singing tenor, I can be on tune. But I think in when I'm when I was like in choir or at church, I would always be off tune because I don't I don't like singing out. I don't like singing. I mean, I, I tried to sing alto instead of singing tenor, which I do very well with. Because it's embarrassing to me to be over the section where the guys were like, oh, my God. I'm a, oh, no, no, I'm no, no. You know what? You know what? That's okay. You know why? Because I, I love Layla Hathaway. And Layla Hathaway can get really deep. Layla Hathaway is an amazing singer. Oh, my goodness. Ooh, her range is so amazing. And she sings so low. And she gets so deep. And I'm like, oh, her, her voice is like deep in the ocean or something. Like, where is, oh, my goodness, she can hit them low notes like nobody's business. So when somebody can yeah, go no, that I, low and sing that low, I love it. I think, I was like, this is amazing. I mean, I, mean, I, I mean, I'm like, I love it. I think it's amazing. It's it's to be appreciated. <laughs> I, I know, but I, you know what? I was just like, I don't know. And I like, I'm serious when I sing a song or or anything when I was in school and I had sung tenor, I would purposely not, and my teacher always said, you know you can sing tenor, right? And I was like, I know, but you're really a tenor. And I know, and I would just always get embarrassed, but I notice when I'm watching opera or singing some of those songs or the deep baritones, 
um, or watching any of the tenors, male or females, that I can really hit those notes. But I just think I get embarrassed because your voice is so different with that. And it's like, oh, my gosh. I mean, I just, I don't know. You know, Jesse Norman, Jesse, I, I think, yeah, speaking of opera, I love opera, too, and I love Jesse Norman. Jesse Norman is also, she's not a soprano. Um, they called her um, sometimes, she, she's a little bit between that alto and that tenor range, mm-hmm. um, contralto, and, and she, she can sing right up in there. And she's an excellent singer. I love her voice. So it's awesome listening to her and listen to Captain Battle. Captain Battle is like a first soprano. She can get way up there. And then you got Jesse Norman, who's right in that alto and that tenor range. Amazing. So, and you so knew that, awesome. um, yeah. At the U.S., the U.S., the um, Met Opera in um, this coming year is really introducing a lot more um, African American men and women opera singers and putting them up in leads in some of the bigger plays that they they replay every year. So I'm really excited for that. Um, oh, wow. I you love know, For a long time, I love, yeah, a long time, yeah, that's awesome. That's amazing. For a long time, Captain Battle used to be one of the ones who used to be at the Met a lot of her and Jesse Norman. It's amazing to see more, um, more you know, more blacks coming in, more African-Americans coming in to have those roles because talented. Oh, my God, yeah, I think you know, I've, I just, Louisa was the last one I've seen um, because I didn't, I didn't, usually I'll see it here. It's live in the theaters on the actual day they're doing it at the Met, and they'll play it live. I missed, the, the last one I got to see was Louisa. I didn't get to see the last two of the season. But Louisa had a lot of black Americans in it, and it was just profound. And they were up front with the, in some of the, the you know, supporting um, positions, and it was just amazing. I think anybody who can do opera and sing at the same time and be that dramatic, they just need to give everybody an award because that's an amazing feat. You can fall down dying and still be singing. I'm just done with you already. I see it. You know what? Yes, and, and the way they roll their R's, they have a certain tenacity to know how to roll their R's. I know I love how they can roll their R's. Can roll their R's very, very well. With me, or maybe I may have to practice it, but they can just get it. It's like, how did you do that? That's a, ama- it's just amazing. Like you're right, you, you're it so really right is. about that. I, I'm going in mm-hmm. January for my first time, taking myself by myself to the opera, and I'm buying. Um, I bought a box seat um, for myself, but I'm so excited because I love opera <laughs> so, so much. So I'm excited That's about awesome. that. That's gonna be yeah, awesome. That's gonna be awesome. You gotta inbox me and tell me how that. Gotta inbox me and tell me how that went. That's gonna be a. That's gonna be awesome. No, and, and you know awesome. what is funny? Because going by myself, I'm just so excited. But that now we're gonna play your song. Get excited by Miss Sheila Moore Piper. Here we go. <laughs>
All right. That was Get Excited by Ms. Sheila Moore Piper, who is actually blessing Rolling with the Diva radio show, an interview today. And we are so excited. We played her first song, Rest Your Mind. And you know what? As I was just looking at that song and listening to it, looking, how do you look at a song? You just look at the words, people. Okay, you guys, because I eat too many candy bars. You guys probably should too, and then you would understand. Um, <laughs> but <laughs> I'm a Snickers bar fool. I in a butterfingers. Um, and people wonder how I stay in shape, Sheila, but I'm going to tell you, it's bench pressing and lifting weights. I keep my curves. Okay. Um, now, real quick, I want to point out to you guys, and this is my favorite, favorite barbecue place in the world. It's actually my my number one, um, and then there's Annie's Barbecue. It's called Big B's Barbe- Texas Barbecue. And the only reason I mentioned it is because he popped up in my feed, and I was laughing because I go there all the time, but – Texas, why is all the singers, the gospel singers I'm singing from, um, interviewing, are from Texas lately? What is with Texas? I mean, I'm getting to know oh, everything wow. from Texas. Everybody's from Texas. Oh, wow. And, like, people need to – um, it's funny because my mom, well, she was from Kilgore, Texas, so it's just funny that everybody's from oh, Texas. Oh, Kilgore is East Texas. Oh, she's East Texas. Is East Kilgore? Kilgore yeah, is up there by Marshall. Up at my Marshall Longview, um, Longview Tyler, that's Kilgore, right in the center of that. Yeah, that's that's yes. um, that's East Texas. Um, yeah, that's East. That's about maybe three, four hours from us. About three, four hours from each. Mm-hmm. Well, um, I'm yeah. coming to Texas in um, and I think it's in um, December or coming February. To Texas? Because I want to go to the Truckers Cafe because I'm interviewing them in July, and they have so much good food, I'm going to need their food. I'm going to put on an apron and herbs and help serve so they'll feed me because I just want food. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, you said it's food. called, I what just, is it called, Texas Cafe? No, Truckers Cafe. It, they make oh, the Truckers bomb Cafe. I don't think I've heard of that. That's different. I was, oh, my God. It is It is just It's amazing food. Um, they they do a minister ministry for the homeless on Mondays. Um, they 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 give backpacks to kids. They're amazing. So my friend here in in, in Henderson is Big B's Texas Barbecue, and, and I'm gonna tell you people, don't be going in there when you've already eaten. You need to go in there hungry because they give you so much food on a plate. It's ridiculous. Okay, it's. The and you said Henderson, that's called what? Because, yeah, that's up there. Henderson is up there with Kilgore and all that other stuff, East Texas. All that's East Texas. That's up right. there together. So, yeah, so Big B's Barbecue. Well, Trucker's Cafe is in Texas, and Big B's Barbecue um, is true Texas-style barbecue. It's here in um, Henderson, Nevada, and it's on 3019 St. Um, Rose Parkway, number 130. It's just a little bit past um, – St. Rose Hospital, and it's on the um, right-hand side if you're going east. And, oh, my God, the food is just fabulous. The company is fabulous. The, everything is just it's amazing. Um, like I said, if you go there hungry, that's on you. I mean, if you go there um, not with having eaten before, that's on you. And if you leave hungry again, that's on you because something's wrong with you. They're open daily from 11 to 9, um, 9 p.m. Hi, Big D's Texas Barbecue, Rolling with the Diva. I'll be over there on Wednesday. Today I'm on my, because um, I think I had one too many Snickers bars yesterday, so I'm on my um, <laughs> spinach and green, um, green, t- um, green tea and um, cucumber, cucumber shake today. So oh, Okay. Oh, girl. Oh, goodness gracious. I, I try to do that stuff. It just doesn't work for me. I, you know, I, know I, just, I just move around. I eat a little bit and move around. <laughs> I eat a little, oh bit, little, little bit of meal throughout the day, and I just move around. I try. I try to do those smoothie things. I try. And I'm like, well, you know um, what? No. no, you know what, though? I, it, it, it's an acquired thing, but I love spinach, I have to tell you what. And I just made spinach and cucumbers. Spinach and cucumbers in the blender with some ice. And you know what? I have to be honest. People, um, you can add in, like, um, like a little bit of apple juice and, or, you know, just mm-hmm. a little bit that's diluted. Because just that's all you're going to be drinking, and it's really good for your body. You no, you wouldn't do it on the days that you have a show because you have to understand with that that um, your body is going to be at its purest state, and it's and it's so you need to be sitting down when you're juicing and you're yeah, juicing for the first time. Yeah, that before. Yeah, yeah, I've had it before. And it makes you go. It makes you go. <laughs> yeah, you're right about that. Yeah. I definitely can't have that one. I have to sing. <laughs> you got to be in the bathroom. So, but I'm going to tell you, it it actually it just. Like yesterday, you know, on the way home from Arizona, 
I just, you know, me and my Snickers bars, we were best friends, so, um, but that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but I'm going to real, um, real quick want to um, remind you guys that um, if you have any travel needs um, and you want to take a family vacation, um, you want to just go see a friend, let Rolling with the Diva know because I actually have a travel agency and it is called Heavenly Travel. And I I believe in um, five-star travel on a three-star budget, so let me help you out. And I will make oh, wow. sure your vacation – I really will make sure your vacation. And I I will be leading foodie tours, again, because I love food. Um, but any kind of vacation you want, you just guys hit me up. And you guys know you can find me at cvwtdiva at gmail.com. Um, or if you just have travel questions and you don't even have to purchase anything from me and you just have a travel question, say you want to know what time the sun sets in Ireland because it's at 1130 in the summertime, just so people know, p.m. Oh, wow. Um, yeah, I can let you guys know that and just um, so you can take the right vacation and, and let you – and I let everybody know this because I found this interesting I learned. If your passport is within six months of expiring and you're traveling overseas, you're within expiring. You're actually technically traveling on an expired passport. So make sure you renew your passport because technically it's not said anywhere, but they don't have to let you back in the country. I just thought I'd give you guys that travel tip because you'd be stuck over there somewhere. All right. What? Wow. You know, yeah, I, I wanted really, to know. Yeah, yeah. That's um. Wow. That that's amazing. Wow. Yeah. So yeah. you know all the yeah, different so, all the different time zones and different countries and stuff like that. Yes. Yeah, you know what? I actually am so anal retentive on that, that I actually have, I'm writing down a color-coded chart, seriously, because like, say, like, check this out, for instance, and let me ask, this is a quiz, this was a question on our quiz for the, um, one of the tests we had to take, is it better to fly east or west when you're, when you are um, traveling um, for long trips? Like, I mean, we, no, let me rephrase it. If you were traveling east, would you, um, would you want to book a, a concert that same night? If you were traveling from Texas to, say, um, Amsterdam. Oh, wow. Uh-uh. I wouldn't. No, because it's too hard on your body, no. and your body has a harder no. time adjusting. Whereas you're coming yeah, the I other way. Yeah, I wouldn't do it. Yeah, yeah I wouldn't exactly. do it. So, so, I yeah, I learn about all the time zones, um, you know, um, a lot about um, when people, because cruises are becoming a popular thing, um, understanding when you're on a cruise ship that when you step on land, you're still now in the law of that of that land, and you still have to be a good person. You can't rely on a cruise ship to say, oh, I have to be good, I have to go back to the cruise ship, because you can get held up. So there's certain things we tell yeah. people, behave yourself, because just because you the, you're on international waters and, you're, and certain things, okay, don't apply. But when you get back on land, those things apply. So we are required to let people know that. Don't call me and tell me it's your jail because I'm going to be laughing at you and say, get out of jail. Yeah, I heard so, I heard about that. I heard they have a jail on board, and if you don't do what you're supposed to do, I heard that they will put you in the jail. I was like, okay. what? I said, they have a jail on a cruise ship? They said, yes, they do have a jail. They have everything because okay, people can get out of hand. So I'm just telling people, but I'm just really excited about this. I really, really want to see um, – I really believe that um, our black people – don't travel enough because they don't know how to travel on a budget. And I'm, I'm going to be the travel agent that helps you travel on that budget and see some great, oh, wow. great places. Because there are, I mean, wow. I, I've been to a lot of places and, um, and I just love it. And I know for people who like you, who travel a lot, you know, and you want mm -hmm. ideas of good hotels, you know, hit me up and I'll look them up in that area and book them for you because you know what? You may have to call you. Be, we've been trying to do, yeah, we've been trying to do Hawaii for a while. So I'm going to have to call oh, you on goodness. that because, I mean, I'm like, oh, my goodness, because timeshare, my family has timeshare, too, and I'm like, it's hard to get into that Hawaii um, for the timeshare. It's hard. And then the place I want to stay in is the Wyndham. I want to stay in the Wyndham, and the Wyndham okay. is, you know, it's, it's hard amazing. to get into. And then they, they said somebody they said somebody it's, it's CAD. When you go, you have to – they had an opening in December, and I think it was like $1,000 for the one-bedroom suite, and it was like almost 2000 for two-bedroom suite. I was like, Lord, I want to stay in the window when I go to Hawaii. That's the place. Well, I you want know to what? Stay. Give I don't me a call. Anywhere else. Give me a call and we'll work it out. And a lot of times people don't realize if you book your trips early, a couple of months in advance, 
or even like sometime a year and pay on them, it's actually a cheaper way. As long as you have the deposit down, they don't take the full cost until you either you make those payments or you can do it at the end. But you know what? There's always a way to travel. Never give up on that. And I'm like the person who wants to see people travel because I've been able to see some amazing places in the last year that I, I never thought I'd see Mount Rushmore. And I know everybody who goes to South Dakota because everybody asks me that. I do because you need to see South Dakota. Um, do you need to see Mount I've Rushmore? I've always wanted to go there because that's where Mount Rushmore is. With all the different presidents. Yeah, that's, that's pretty hot. Yeah. yeah. I, went, I went here for a week and it only cost me. This was before I was doing travel agents. But I went there for a week and only cost me 700 and some dollars, including my hotel. And I stayed at a five-star hotel, which is considered a luxury hotel. I also really? my food. Wow. Yep. I found the best food places. And Mount Rushmore is an amazing place to see. And, I, and you know, they don't have Uber and, and Lyft out there, but they have some really low-budget taxis that are like $8. And, and sometimes I would just walk around. And you know what? Seriously, and it's you can you can you can go some great places. And if you go to Mount Rushmore, you have to go for a week because there's so much to see in South Dakota. It's not just Mount Rushmore; it's a whole the whole thing is based on a brown presidency. And now, by the time I get back there, President Obama's statue will be on the on one of the corners because every corner has um, for a president really? on each corner. They're gonna put his yep. statue up there. Yep, they surely are. They were actually talking about it when I was there. So. Yeah, Let me ask you a question. Yeah. Why, why, why are they doing that? Is it because he's the only African American or black president? No, why no, are they no. Uh-uh. Look, this is that's what people think. No, every president from um, George Washington and up has a statue. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. I thought because when they show it, they only show like George Washington and Abraham Lincoln. So uh-huh. I mean, I am thinking it's just them. So they have no. A, oh my God. Every president I'm who walk- ever, every president who has held an office gets a statue there. And you know, yes, and it's in their liking image. When you stand there and wow. look like it, when I look, I mean, when I stood stood there and looked at John F. Kennedy and Truman, I thought I was literally looking at them in picture, literally. Seriously, every president, and there's a story to tell them. And it's, I think I took it took me six hours to walk all those blocks because I was tired, but it was it it was worth it. It was it's an amazing. That's why I tell people to go see it because they only think. Again, remember how you said in the beginning your pastor said that the media only shows certain things. Yeah, that's, that's, that's right. the same thing that the media only shows a certain part of um, like that. Like oh, it's just these. No, it's every president and the statue yeah. for. For uh, it's every president. The whole thing is based. Like I don't know if a lot of people know that. Did you know Thomas Jefferson invented the ice cream? No, I didn't know that. Yep, and every president is there. It's an amazing little town, and to see the people and the, the structure, you know, they they're more of a um, industrial town, so some things are not there as much. But they're really, I mean, and they have great concerts and everything's cheap. But like I said, I want to take people on those kind of tours because people are always. When you look at the media, they have you thinking one way. When I went there, I was like, dang, I should have stayed here longer because it was so much to um, see and do, and I learned so much. Mount Rushmore wow. was built uh, Mount Rushmore was built with, um, with dynamite, precisionly placed, and not full sticks of dynamite. It took them years. It's amazing. And then you get to meet I all the people. I never knew that. Around. That's amazing. Yep. I'm telling you, all the people around the world, you get to meet so many people. I met people from Africa, Nigeria. Um, and they all go there for that, for that reason. So look yes, at that. That's yeah, beautiful. And, and, I've always wanted and, to go. I've always wanted to go to, I've always wanted to, go to Mount Rushmore in South Dakota to check you, it out. You have to go. So see, at least see people. There's one other person that wanted to go. Because people are like, who goes there? I'm telling you, it's a thing that everybody <laughs> should see because <laughs> You know what? That's it's okay. Funny. I love, I love people. It is funny though, because people are like you went to Mount Rushmore. I did. I had in South Dakota. I had a, yeah. a blast. My husband and I, we went to, um, we love Murder Beach, South Carolina. We went there years ago just to be, you know, for spring break. Cup man. We went in 2011. We're back again in 2012. We had a great time. Um, it was actually six years ago, and somebody said, uh, "Why don't you? Why do you go way to Murder Beach, South Carolina, when you can just go right here to Galveston?" And and I was like, the Bible says, let the ignorant be ignorant still. So I'm not going to even ask that question. <laughs> I, 
you know what? I'll love you in your Bible verses. I'm going to have to get well versed. You're like, look, I don't need you to back up off me, Mr. and Sister. Get away from me and learn your Bible verses. Yeah, You're man, good. I'm not going to do that. Me, so, so you know what? I'm not going to even answer that question. We got Myrtle, we got Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, and Galveston. Don't get me wrong. Oh, I love Galveston because I'm like, what if I'm into two hours in Galveston? And I love Galveston. As the people say, B-O-I, Buono Island. Beautiful. One of my favorite restaurants is there, but um, no. <laughs> We're still in the state of Texas. We're flying out. <laughs> okay. Texas. We're going to South Carolina. Myrtle Beach is on the other side of Charleston. And you asked me, okay. I was like, you know what? I'm not going to be the type of answer to buy it because let the age of you still move around. <laughs> so it's the same thing in your case. Why would you not want to go see Mount Rushmore in South Dakota? Because we want to go see it. It's like, you know, it's, it's almost like coming to Las Vegas. You you get to see Hoover Dam. You know, have you ever, you ask people, they go to the strip, but you ask them about Hoover Dam. It's like, well, what was that? You've never been to Hoover Dam? <laughs> but you've gone no, to I'm the strip. So I'm, wow. I'm just like, that's, that's going to be me as an educational, like, traveler who, like, oh, my God, here, let me take you here. Like, when I go to St. George, Utah, people are like, you go up to Utah. Yeah, I go to St. George because you have Mount Zion there. You know, it's just, it's amazing to me about some of the places yeah. that are world that people, like, and people can see. that's where the see. Brooklyn Tabernacle Choir is, too. That Brooklyn Tabernacle Choir come in and it's out of Utah, Salt Lake City. I love it. I love Salt Lake oh City because I love to look at the mountains. But I'm oh a lot goodness. of bread there. I'm not a big bread person, but they like bread, and I'm just like, wow. But it's beautiful. They're just the city and, itself. It's a really, really pretty, oh, yeah, yeah. pretty place. I said, it's just a different And you know, beautiful. like South Dakota, they're on the potato thing. If I would have called one more tater tot, I would have lost my mind. <laughs> <laughs> I, it's like, I, I, don't have... want, I don't want any bread. I don't want any potato tot. I'm and good. And you ask for french fries, <laughs> and the lady's like, we don't serve french fries. We serve tater tots. Ma'am, they're french fries. A hamburger is served with tater tots. Ma'am, I want french fries. No, you're not getting french fries. This is tater tots. Okay, so I went one day to get some nachos. Nachos. Guess what? They That's were made with tater tots. Nachos? Yeah, I was oh, done. Wow. I'm like, I'm done. I'm done already. And so that's in South Dakota, on. right? That's a, yeah. I, I'm going to have to remember. Everything don't is, order some fries when you go to South Dakota. I don't want any tater tots. No I'm going to try. They, won't, they don't give you fries. You get the tater tots, so you better be happy with it, okay? And I'm going to tell oh, you wow. what. Wait. There was a taco that was a tater tot taco with chicken. I'm I'm done with you guys. Would stop with this tater tot thing. So just know tater tot <laughs> is there. they have the potato thing going on there. But um, you know what? Another place is since we're talking about travel and great beaches is this. And this is in the United States. We have in the United States we have 22 of some of the greatest beaches in the world. Um, Anna Marie Islands, Florida, is one of them. I went to Anna Marie Where is Islands. That? For- that's in Florida. Adam Marie Islands in Florida. I know, and I, I, and I love and I love Florida. I've been to Tampa Bay. I've been to uh, Miami. You, I've been to Orlando, um, Tallahassee. I've been all through Florida, but I've never known that. But I've been to St. Augustine or by Jacksonville, Jacksonville. Yep. Um, even um, Fort Lauderdale. I have never heard of that right there. What you're talking about? And I love the. And I was too. looking. I was looking up like one day. I was like, okay, well, we're, I want to go to the beach, but I wanted to be in the United States, and so. I looked up the beaches, and I'm like, oh, my God. And I looked at that. I stayed there for four days, and, again, a five-star. I got a discount, and I only paid $640, including for my flight and the hotel. Oh, wow. So, and I, um, and I, in in the condo. You have a website? You have a website? You have any travel? That's your website? Um, I'm going to be, yes, I have one, and then I'll be, um, as soon as I finish my last class, I'm going to open it up for everybody to see and to just go on there, and you guys can book, you know, you can book, you can let me know, or I can help you book, or you can book, but I'm just, I want to be the person who wants to tell you every little site that's about it, because I don't know if people realize, um, actually, in Anna Marie Islands, you know, they have where you can ride horses on the beach. Wow. So, yeah, I'm I'm really about the, the little things about when you travel that people didn't know, and so, yeah, I like it. And I just, I'm just happy about it. Miss Sheila, you have, again, just like every artist, I never know why until like, and I tell the same story every time, why God has a person on the show. But your your song, Rest Your Mind and Get Excited, really had a lot to do today with talking about travel, about mm-hmm. um, 
about we you know we were talking about the um the African American and poverty and mm-hmm. um mm-hmm. and and I'm going to I'm just I'm not I'm going to go to um the last one um and I like this one and you guys can read more on it we'll talk about it more but the black white high school um completion gaps have narrowed and that's a great thing more African American black American um teens are finishing high school now unfortunately okay. the college okay, the college gap remains huge, but we're going to get there. And I really liked your song today because it just reminded me we really need to rest in the Lord, but at the same time, mm-hmm. we need to really get excited about what he has in store for each of us. And I know okay. that we're struggling as a as a race, but we don't have to be because if you guys can't see of, of every time that one of these gospel singers comes on or one of their guests that I have, you know, that they are motivating, they are inspiring, and they're showing you, you don't, uh, oh, my God, like Mr. Theodore Chestnut, when I had him on Saturday, he's oh, saying I the love same him. That's thing. Oh, I love him. Mm-hmm. I oh, love my God, yeah, I love, love him. him. I mean, I mm-hmm. love him. And he and he's saying the same thing you had. He would say, you know, God called him out of his job. You guys don't have to be stuck in your jobs. You don't, it's, it's, yeah. some people love the, corp, the corporate world, and it's not for every. the corporate roles are not for everybody, and whereas working on your own is not for everybody. But you need to understand, if you have a dream or a goal, listen to these people that's been on the show. They're telling you. They're showing you. If you guys didn't count the places that she said that she has sung at, that Miss Sheila said she sung at, in the, in the last six months, I'm going to need you to go back and, and count because she has been a lot of places and do a lot of things. She's living her mm-hmm. dream. So we need to focus on it, um, if everybody just takes a corner of their world and lifts herself up, lift the people around you. And for the for the people there that are, you know, we're in a impoverished, if, if, if we go into those communities and we teach them one skill, we're helping a lot of people. One person impacts a whole uh, can impact like a ripple effect. So you guys should be blessed and honored just by listening to these people. It's not about me. Yeah, I get on the show and I act silly and I talk about my stickers, bars, and all that stuff. And anybody wants a sticker, <laughs> too, just stick to bars. Give me my, I'll give you my I address. Love it. I love I'm sorry, I really love stickers, bars. And I, I love I, it. I, I, I'm supposed to be but a know, vegan I mean, and a vegetarian. But, you know, but, I like what, but I like what you said because you said something so interesting because I think sometimes people don't want to, and I, I, one of my favorite quotes is even in the album, my record, I, don't, I have a favorite quote, it's like, you cannot be a transforming individual in a non-transforming environment. And I mm. can say this, when I really had to switch it over from teaching to this, to doing this full time, I tell you, it was hard to do. It was not easy making that transition. I'm going to not make it because, I mean, I want people to know, no, it wasn't easy. It was not an easy transition. Um, the way I was going back and forth on it, I was I was really having to struggle. I was really having struggles to, to come out because I was really trying to stay with you know stay with the teacher thing and stay with it full time because I was making the money and I had reached my pinnacle and I was up there now making the money that I wanted to make and and the um in the sixteenth seventeenth of the fifteenth fourteenth year that I was making it in some people take thirty years to make it I was up there in by thirteen fourteen fifteen years just trying to get it. And, you know, and I was having a problem. I mean, I was having issues trying to switch it over because when you go into this, as, as this artistry, you just never know what it's going to be because everybody's not who they say they are in this business. And, oh, uh, and you got to know that. True. Everybody's not who they say they are, and everybody's not going to do with you what they say they're going to do. They say they're going to do this. Oh, we're going we gonna to take it to the left. They end up going to circle. And I, I thought we said we were going to the left. Why are we going in a circle? But it's, it's – and, and you, what you learn that, that's a part of the journey. It's a part of the journey, but you cannot be, and I had to learn. And I, at first I was a little intimidated. Yes, I'm a music person, but I was like, Lord, I don't sound like this person. I'm not this person. My music sounds different. I got this urban sound. Everybody else is doing this. He said, I didn't call you. I call you to do what I need, what I need you to do. This is what I want you to do. Do swap, walk in your lane. And when you, when you mm-hmm. drive in, we'll drive, drive in your lane and, you know, stay in your lane, stop swerving. Then everything is going to be fine. You have to stay in your lane and you have to do that. But, if you're not ready, you got to be moved. When the Lord says it's time to move, you have to move. You, the what if is going to come to you. But it's not always an easy transition. But, you know, once you get on the other side, it's nothing like it. I'm not going to tell you everything is going to be roses when you get to your get to this side. But I can tell you, I can assure you, with every challenge, with every victory, the Lord is there. 
You know, it's like I love the movie Boss Baby. <laughs> Boss Baby in right. the end, say I, you know, we know at the end of Boss Baby, I love that movie. I can watch the movie every day. When um, when, um, um, like the big the brother when he comes to say when he's trying to get him to come back home and say I want to be your big brother, let me be your big brother, and you know I assure mm. you that I, I'll be there with you. I'll be there through this. I'll be there with you through that. The Lord is with you. He said He never leave us or forsake us. So even in your hard times, He's with you. Even in your joyous times, He's with you. So it's not like you by yourself. So when you make the transition coming over from that to whatever you're supposed to be doing, the Lord is with you. You are going to have some challenges. I'm not going to sit there and say you're not going to have no adversity. You are. Because, you know, like my pastor says, when it, when you have much adversity, then, you know, blessings follow. You, you can't want the blessings and you can't want the wealthy place if you haven't gone through the fire and through the flood. When you go through the fire and go through the flood, you know, Jesus says he'll bring you out to your wealthy place. Now, your wealthy place may mm-hmm. be like yourself. Like you said, you get to enjoy a beautiful – because you get to go places you've never seen before. That's what, really what life is about, not just staying in your own little circle where you can't be a blessing to anybody else. Like you, you're educating me. I've always wanted to go to South Dakota, and we're having this conversation. You're talking about you just educated me because, see, I am thinking it's just the, the four presidents that I always see, George <laughs> Washington, um, Abraham Lincoln, and blah, blah, blah. Yes. And so I'm thinking it's just because they always just show me that side. But now that you educated and showed me, no, you're going to see all the presidents who were ever presidents in our country. I'm like, that's historical. Why would you not, I'm you know, not, go I'm there? I'm put up all of the pictures again for that for you. Because I'm going to tell you, people were like, and when I told them in Obama, they had the same reaction. Oh, because black, no, if people, because he's actually a president of the United States, and they put every president. So it's like sometimes the media just needs to go sit down because they be having us. Like you, like you said, but like you, like you said earlier, they only show you certain things. And so when you think about it, it's like they don't show you the whole full picture. So I'm all, like you said, so I only saw that part. So I didn't see everything else. So by you educate me because you've been there. Then I'm like, wow, I need to go check that out for myself because I had no idea. I just thought maybe they just carved me in those four presidents and that was it. And I'm like, what's the rest of them? <laughs> but the rest it's of them so are there. You just have to go see them. So, no, you know, you know not what? Gonna, yeah. You have to go see them because I'm going to tell you, when you see them, you will stand there. Because all I could do was look at Kennedy and you know who I thought of? Martin Luther King. All of a sudden, every person that was in that era that was trying to help you know, stop yeah. racism at that moment. You look at each president and you will remember, even if you didn't pay attention in history class and you have some common sense, you will remember something about that president. And yeah. it's just entering the scan there because people, will, you'll come around and people will be talking and it's just the most thing. You know, it's also interesting. A lot of people were telling me when you go to South Dakota, oh, you should be really scared because you're going to get lynched and things like that. You know, South Dakota <laughs> was a nice, I swear to God. South Dakota was the nicest set of people. Wow. I just went to um, Kingman, Arizona. That's a place people should be really, really worried about if you're a person of color. Uh, I was the only person of color in that whole town for five hours. When okay. I went to Gilbert, Arizona, when I went to Gilbert, Arizona some years ago, and I went with my husband, we went for, for New Year's. Uh, 2012 we went. That was um, six years ago. We went because I wanted to go somewhere different, and the Lord sent me there, and I was I was like, Lord Jesus, oh, Lord, there's just not many, not many of uh, us. So the Lord was like, and I had to pray, Lord, just let everybody be nice when I get there. When I got there, everybody was beautiful. And I did see, you know, um, some blacks. I did see some blacks there as well. So my thing is, like you said, the places where you think you shouldn't go, is, I mean, especially like last, last year, Cancun. I was in, I went to Cancun for my anniversary, my husband and I. Well, I asked the Lord, Father God, where should I go for our anniversary? I want to go somewhere nice, you know, not that expensive. Just have a great time. Jesus gave me Cancun. When I got to Cancun, beautiful place. All this mess about, oh, you shouldn't go over there. You know, they kill people. They do this. They do that. Wherever you go and the Lord takes you there, you're stuff to bless. You're stuff to bless. And you can't be afraid to not go somewhere and live because of this and this and this. If that's the case, you'll never live. You'll never live. You'll never get out. Mm-hmm. You'll never see anything. You'll always be stuck in fear. And, and the word says he didn't give us no spirit of fear. How love is our mind. So you have to live your life. You know, live your you know live your life there because you only get one. You only and get you one know what? I'm, I'm going to say this about you. I've been listening to you, and you need to. I know you do music, and I don't know if you speak to women, 
but you need to just go speak because you really, when you bring those Bible verses and you stop, because one point I was listening to you and writing down what you were saying. So I was like, oh my God, God, I'm here to encourage you. You may have two callings because you really, you are just, I mean, I was like, wow, you and appointed when you, when she came on too. And even Miss Nezia, how um, she was Mm -hmm. like, you guys appointed, Mm -hmm. you guys need to really, you guys could consider uh, um, a gospel um, concert with a speaking engagement because you guys are really um, you you and you and those Bible verses. I'm like, wait, let me write this one down. I'm like, wow, mm-hmm. now that that's amazing. I want to. I just want to mm-hmm. um, say you you blessed me today. I'm I'm always blessed when people come on this show and and I just really thank God and I pray that um, the Lord He keeps you. He keeps you safe, and you keep doing great things, and that your um, music and your family and everything, you know, everything will be blessed seven times over, as we know seven is a completion number. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah. I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm honored that you would come on the show with me today, and you, you made me well, laugh. Well, thank and, you. Yeah. You know, thank you. I'm mm-hmm. honored that you would even ask me to come on, and the fact that you are just so historic. You hold, I love history, and the fact that, and I love traveling, and the fact that you are a historian and what you do, you know this, and you just do what you do, and you do it with so much tenacity. I love it. I thank you, and I'm I'm blessed to be in your presence because I'm like to just to hear you go to see some places and know about these different things, and you're able you know able to educate and and story and, and come back and say, well, is this is this, and you can do this this this, you know, it, it lets you know that you can still live, that you don't have mm-hmm. to be you know worried about the yeah for the rest of your life you're always gonna have to probably pay electric bill. <laughs> we're not gonna we're, never, we're not gonna never get away from it. We're gonna have to pay a, a, I mean a gas bill. We're not gonna be able to get away from that. But life is to be lived, you know what I'm saying? Life is to be lived. And I think that sometimes we forget, like, oh, I can't travel. But then you'll be the first person, and I used to do this, oh, I can't travel, but then I'm in the store at Nordstrom spending $100 on some shoes that I really didn't need. (laughs) The red bottoms, the red bottoms. (laughs) You're right. You're right. Me and my Converse habit. Me and my Vans have it because right now I'm looking for a pair of Vans that are Snoopy, that are the peanut characters, right? And those vans, uh, I they, saw some of their famous footwear. I think it was famous footwear. I saw some that they had some nice ones. They had some really nice ones. I saw some recently. So I'm online. like, you know they what? Nice. You want to travel. And this is what I tell people. Stop and think about what you spend money on because I think I can guarantee you four times a month, if you really, really stop and think about what you spend money on and take $25 each of those four times, that's right. $100. You're right. Uh, over, You're right. That's $1,200. You could actually go somewhere for $1,200 with two people to an all-exclusive resort with the food, the drinks, and everything. Disney World. Disney World is amazing. <laughs> okay. I love Disney World. I'm I'm Disney World. World. I'm Disney World. So I'm just telling people, so you know what? It's possible. I'm 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 inspired and I'm just and I'm really inspired by um everybody that's been on and and I'm just really thankful, like I said, to be uh, even to be considered for um the spin awards because it really God has really been telling me because I'm trying to take my show in a different way and I said God is the way to take it and He's really shown me He's you're doing the right thing. I don't charge for my show. I never will. God will provide those sponsors that I need, and things will be come up. But my job is to make sure that people like you, Miss Sheila, and everybody mm-hmm. else gets the, their word out and gets their product out there and gets their songs so that people can hear them because these songs are amazing. And what people don't know is I have the luxury of listening to these songs anytime. Sometimes I'll just turn on the, uh, my computer and just let it go because I have the – I've been blessed. And I just I um I'm honored and, and I want and I thank you for coming on and um before we go, can you give one last shout out to where people can find you at? Yes. Um uh, well I want to say thank you so much again for having me on your show. I am honored to be in your presence and blessed as well. Um, to meet um a sister that's doing it and doing it wonderful and doing big things in the Lord. It's always great to be in great company and surrounded by people who, who are surrounded, with, with, who are doing great things. So congratulations again on your spin award. I'm blessed. I'm believing God to go again this year. It's going to be absolutely amazing, so get ready to have a great time. I was there last year, and you won't be disappointed. So again, yeah. congratulations. Um, for Thank my you. people who want to uh, connect with me or the people who want to connect with me, I am, um, I'm on social media. I have two pages, um, Sheila, S-H-E-L-I-A, more Piper. That's one of my personal pages. And then I have my support page, too. Um, they call it a fan page. I call it just a, a, um, a support page. Um, get on there and holler at me and say hello or whatever. I'm also on Twitter. 
Um, my Twitter feed is at Miss Sheila, M-S-S-H-E-L-I-A. Uh, you can connect with me there. And also on my website, SheilaMarPiper.com, and also BDMUGrooveMusic.com. So, and um, also if you need to, um, we want to get the product, just any, any digital outlet I'm on, Google, Google, use Google, and I'll come up. <laughs> so, but thank you so much. So everybody thank for listening, you. and I really appreciate you being on this call, um, this call today, and I, we don't take your listening and your time for granted. So thank you so much, and blessings 100. May God, God go with you and bless you um, initially and abundantly from this time thank forward. Thank you. And you know who? And you know who I'm having on Wednesday is Chad Howard. Oh wow, my bro, my bro, Mr. Chad Howard. He's also my one of my ladies, my Houston homies here. <laughs> oh my God, I'm very. Oh my God, Texas! See, this is what I'm saying. The like, Texas doing it big. He's on Wednesday, so you guys tune in because we are going to be um, listening to his songs. Hold on, I have to name them because yes, I'm so Lord. excited. And thank, and thank you, Chad. I'm saying on the radio. He actually noticed that I had the day wrong, and I was like, at first I thought, is he talking about his flyers? I realized, oh my God. So he's gonna this far by faith is one of his songs, and yeah. Jesus always with me. Um, we're going to be playing his song. So um, you guys tune in. Again, we are, the diva is just blessed, and I'm just, I. Um, yeah, and I want to say a shout out to Shanray Price, my sister out of out of Georgia. I don't know if she's listening in, but I love her. Shanray, I love you. I love you. I love you. <laughs> so I love you, too, and you can come on the show, too, please, if you sing. So bring yourself on the show. Yeah, you know I'll tell Shanray to connect with you. Yeah, yeah. I want to point out, too, because I know a lot of. People think that I just do. Um, I I, I um, interview book authors. I interview people who own businesses. Um, I interview people who have stories um, that they've overcome and done, and they feel have done great things. If you're an ordinary person, but we all do something extraordinary. And sometimes I just look for hosts to come on the show with me and talk about topics. Like we're going to be talking about a topic on Thursday that's going to be um, hitting a home with a lot of people. And it's when a woman says no, and she doesn't have to dress a certain way to not be considered a slut, um, or to be, or some guy say she looks like a slut. That's not the the thing. No means no, and and we need to understand that. And we're also going to be talking about um, mental health. And I am more than my um, what's going on with my mind. Um, so we um, so if you guys have a topic you guys want to hear, or you have a business, or somebody who wants to brand. Please send them over. There is no cost to my show. Um, I just like helping people, and I like networking. So everybody have a great night. Thank you for tuning in with the Diva. And today was our special guest, Ms. Sheila Moore Piper. Good night, y'all. Night, Ms. Sheila. Good night. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Hold everything for less. The Pack Store Save event is going on now at the Home Depot, and the shelves are full of smart storage solutions. Start with durable 27 gallon storage totes for just $9.48 each. They're made of heavy duty resin to hold up to 400 pounds. At that price, you should get a few extra just to hold the money you'll save. Come get organized at the Pack Store Save event going on now at the Home Depot. More saving, more doing. Valid through August 22nd, US only.